Right, we come to the Yorkshire Air Museum, the Allied Air Forces Memorial and Yorkshire Air Museum. So, plenty of parking here. I think you could probably fit a motorhome in here somewhere, but we'll come in the car. Yeah. Dog friendly. Dog friendly. As long as you pick up. I think it goes without saying, really, but there mm. you go. So let's have a look, wander around, and see what you can see. Saw one of these on the motorway, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, we did, didn't we? The service area. Yeah, stopped in a service area next to us. It was on a trailer. It was on a trailer the wind, with the wings folded up. Yeah. But yeah. You, what surprises you when you look at these is quite how small they are compared to other sort of modern aircraft. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a Supermarine Spitfire Mark I. So in 1934. 1934? Yeah. yeah. In service from 38 to 54. The Rolls Royce Merlin V12. Top speed 150, 355 miles an hour. I could do 395 miles, but probably not at the same time. No. This is the squadron room with the Roll of Honour on there. The Royal Auxiliary Air Force. Roll of honour. Huh. A lot of people killed and missing. A lot of them 42, 43. Mm. Pilots on there. Yeah, New Zealand, Australia, USA, Belgium, Rhodesia. Huh. Oh, lots of pictures in here. It looks like old drawings of all the squadron leaders. Mm, doesn't it? Yeah. That's what Dad was flying officer. Jenny's dad was a flying officer. Yeah, some lovely paintings. Some art. No, it's not, is it? What is that? Is that what it is? Is it some oh blimey, I forgot what the typhoon? I think so. And the scramble bell. Mm. Hmm. A squadron goat. <laughs> some uh, big trucks here. That's the famous Alvis. Saracen armoured car. The Saracen could deliver an infantry section to battle even in a nuclear environment. Six wheels driven and the front four steer. So it's four wheel steering and six wheel drive. Old Bedford. Thornycroft Amazon, six ton, six by four, with a Coles train, a Coles crane even. So this was the Grand Slam bomb, and it dropped by an, a Lancaster, and it would reach supersonic speed in the fall, about 320 metres a second, to embed in the earth before detonation, cre create an earthquake bomb uh, effect to destroy bridges, tunnels and reinforced structures cast in Sheffield and the hot explosive torpex was poured into the case and it took a month to, to cool. So this is a tall boy that was actually dropped on the turpits. Reef. It's a 12,000 pound earthquake bomb. That's all it is compared to the <laughs> Yeah. Mm. It's a Rolls Royce Olympus 593 engine used in Concorde. Three, six, start four. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yes, sir. Coming up on three. first jet bomber it's all a little en engine here look 145 horsepower de Havilland moth I'm comparing that to the Concorde engine 64 horsepower Cirrus Mark 1 hmm. surface to air missiles used by the Argentinians against British aircraft was captured in June 82. Tiger Cat. So that's got to be a tornado, isn't it? It meant business, didn't it? That's an English electric lightning. This could do 1500 miles an hour. What? Is that fast? That's pretty fast. It's <laughs> Mac 2. Right. Twice the speed of sound fly for 800 miles but you'd run out of fuel if you were doing 1500 miles an hour as you imagine in pretty quick time a French uh, Dassault Mirage it's a pretty little plane isn't it I can only do 1400 miles an hour we're still quite fast 1460 Mach 2 yeah. and that, could, that had a range of 1500 miles so that was quite different wasn't it so if that could only do 800 miles you would yeah, think you, you, if you were going into battle, you you know you you're two two hundred miles away. It's two hundred yeah. miles there, two hundred miles back. Yep. Plus any manoeuvring. Buccaneer. Yep. Uh, people died uh, developing it. A hawker hunter. So that could only do 710 miles an hour. <laughs> it's half the speed. Yeah, but it only, only had a range of 445 miles. Yeah. It's a trainer. It's less than the van, now. Yeah. Less than the van. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the van wasn't doing 700 miles an hour, though. <laughs> no. The Hawk Hunter. And a tornado. Imagine that coming down the runway at you. Yeah, so it says this is a live aircraft, so presumably it's still capable of flying. But it looks like it's got a generator plugged in there. Let's see what it says. So it was originally into continental nuclear bombers. 1961 they converted to air to air refueling, which meant British aircraft would fly anywhere in the world without the need to, for ground bases to refuel. So it could do 640 miles an hour at a range of 4,600 miles and carry 12,000 gallons of fuel. Ooh. So it was a flying fuel tanker. Yeah, yeah. And this Victor took part in the Falklands War and enabled a Vulcan aircraft to bomb Port Stanley in 1982 and it's kept in working order. Right. Lusty Linda. Well, it says it's... Yeah. 
they have to keep it, well they're keeping it in working order, which is good because I see all the wheels are covered up. Yeah. We've got a generator obviously presumably to charge the batteries, I don't know. We had six, pi six crew, crew of six, pilot, co-pilot, two navigators, air electronics and a chief and a crew chief. We ought to mention in one of our previous videos we went to the Solway Air Museum and we went on a Vulcan. Yeah, yeah we went on the up into the cockpit the Vulcan had a very very interesting talk in there. So if you look up here somewhere I'll put the link to it. So this is the Nimrod. Do I sound like I know what I'm talking about? I don't really <laughs> just <laughs> Reading the boards, that helps. So the Hawker Sidley Nimrod in service from 69 to 2010, 490 miles an hour, and it could fly 5,755 miles. It could carry air to air missiles, air to surface missiles, nuclear weapons, naval, naval mines, depth charges, and torpedoes. Guess not all at the same time. Now they could shut down one of the engines, or one or two of the engines, to save fuel. Maritime reconnaissance. That's the air-to-air -air refueling nozzle. Right. Control tower. Teleprinters and radio sets used to work on those. It's a general purpose room, presumably selected, not obviously selected in there. What? Oh yeah, switchboard. I remember that. Remember that. I used to work on one of those, or several of those. I used to have them at St Albans Telephone Exchange. And here's something that will really make you smile. On nights when it was not practical to use the searchlight, a balloon was again launched. But this time, a candle was lit and placed in a lantern attached to it. Then it was observed through binoculars until it went out of sight as it entered the car. Let me jump. There's another chap in here. Well, that just about covers the main workings of flight control. And now I must dash. Because I would do two low-level runs over the control tower, if only to wake up the fire and rescue crew, and in many cases... That's about how tall Of little buildings to go in. This is the French officers' mess. Yes, there were scores of happy evenings spent in the mess, especially when there was no operations plan. The near night parties became quite good. Good wine, actually, yeah. <laughs> and followed by the good old fashioned like English beer and French red wine. Yeah. There were sad times too when we learned that some of our friends had failed to return from hops. Against the odds uh, exhibition. It's a bit dark in here, so I'm not sure how much you'll see. <laughs> Turn out the door.
51 out of every 100 airmen were killed in action. We dropped 955,000 tonnes of bombs. And temperatures could, inside the bombers could drop to four, minus 40 degrees. 55,888 aircrew lost their lives. Guernica. Yeah, Picasso's Guernica. Searchlights. The first is talking about the First World War, where it became the major weapon of war and the growth of the uh, strategic bombing. So that's what your dad was, wasn't he? That's your dad, yeah. Well, those two, he's a yeah, he navigator. He's a navigator. And a wireless operator. And a wireless operator. Sometimes he had to be both. Depends on the aircraft, didn't yeah. it? Obviously, on the bigger ones, they could have two, two people doing it. That's right. Bomber Harris. The first 1,000 bomber raid of the wars carried out by Royal Air Force Bomber Command. The night of 31st, 19, uh, 31st of May 1942. The original target was Hamburg, but it meant the alternative target of Cologne was selected. They dropped 1,455 tonnes of bombs over the city in 75 minutes and destroyed 600 acres of built up areas, killed 486 and made 59,000 people homeless. Oh. Talking about the dam, the dam busters. Eight aircraft failed to return, 53 were killed, and three became prisoners of war. Although the operation was not a complete success, it was a superb achievement of supreme skill and courage, and perhaps the greatest bombing raid on a single squadron during the Second World War. Well, imagine being stuck in one of those. A tail gunner. Oh, your dad was so lucky not to have been heavily involved in that. I'm just, re just reading here about the yeah. attempted bombing of uh, Hamburg here in 1944. Oh, sorry, a raid against Nuremberg in March 1944 was the most disastrous of the war. Larger numbers of air German aircraft were roaming at will, providing and proving highly effective. Yeah, because it wasn't until 1944 that he was because he was too young at the beginning of the war yeah. and then he spent a lot of time training, navigating, yeah. wireless operator and all that. Yeah, and he only really sort of got involved in yeah. 1945, didn't he? Well, no, late, late 44, 45. Right, that's what it said, late 45. No, you said late 45, it's late 44, 45. Oh, right, OK. That's the railway station at Hanover. Well, we've been to Hanover, we? we have, we've been to Hanover, yeah. Didn't look like that. No, no. Just saying that most uh, RAF stations had telephone boxes on the base, obviously where people could phone home or whatever, but they would lock them up during the raids uh, and so that no one could leak, you know, we're off on a raid tonight. And yeah, yeah. Gas bags and super zeppelin ex exhibition. There. Gas bags and super zeppelin. <coughs> oh, gas bags, two super zeppelins. Wow. <laughs> it was 196 meters long. Good grief. So airships developed from the very earliest forms of manned flight balloons. So they turned into rigid airships, didn't they? Yeah. Originally they were just balloons around a structure. They're rigid or dirigible. 
aircraft has a huge metal skeleton over which is stretched a skin of waterproof canvas or envelope and separate gas bags are contained within the structure. Or terror from the sky. Where we used to live, there is a hangar for um, airships. Cardington. Just not far from where we were. The first airship destroyed by an aeroplane, air June the 7th, 1915 near Bruges. At half past nine p.m. my uncle, who had only been home from France five hours, left and I sat talking to my mother. After a while I fell asleep. All of a sudden I was awakened by a reverberating roar like lions when they're hungry. I leapt out of bed like a slice of breeze lightning and slipped into my clothes. I then heard a sound like a tattoo on a kettle drum. I looked out of the window and saw a searchlight flitting about. Someone shouts, put your lights out, and I obeyed. I went downstairs, and looking up, I saw an elongated shape, not unlike a cigar, and of a silver gray in color. Yeah, so the R101 airship was built at Carnington in 1929, crashed in France on the 5th of October, 1930, on its maiden voyage. Kill it. They killed 48 of its crew. I mean, they were going to create super zeppelins, the zeppelin company, and they were going to use uh, helium, but, they, but the Americans banned the export of helium, so they had to use highly inflammable hydrogen. That's the Hindenburg. And that's one of the reasons the Hindenburg crashed and exploded. I wish the airships had not come. So obviously the RAF was 100 years old last year. It's the oldest independent air force in the world. Created on the 1st of April 1918 when the Royal Flying Corps and the Royal Navy Air Service were joined together. That's when Dad's dad was in the Royal Flying Corps. Okay. And but only as on ground crew. And yeah. Up in a no, plane. no. It's all about the guns in here, so... Reef. All different types of turrets. Brown <laughs> machine. Radar sets, radio sets. Wireless operator. Yeah. Wireless air operator, air gunner. I think she was a bit young for that, didn't you? It's small as well. Yeah. RAF pilot training with the USAAF in the USA during World War Two. Didn't your dad go to Canada? Yeah, dad went to Canada for his navigator training. Yeah. And then he went to that uh, base that we went to. Up at Mother Galloway. Yeah. And I went to Canada. Wickton. Wickton, yeah. Wickton, yeah. Yeah, to learn all sorts of different uh, landscapes and whatever. Yeah. Good. beast, isn't it? The original R registration. Centre steered. Wow, look at the wings. So this is a Douglas Dakota. 1935 designed as in service from 42 to 1970. Go and have a look. Oh, yeah. 
quite a steep incline for the seats here. Whew. the cockpit. There's some seats here as well, presumably for the navigators, engineer. Hi Poppy. Oh it's a Woolsey. Yeah. Had a Woolsey engine. Yeah, Woolsey on the front yeah. and a, a ladder to get in. 1917. That's an Avro 504. Ninety-five miles an hour it could do. <laughs> Had a range of two hundred and fifty miles. First flew in September nineteen thirteen. It was used by the Royal Flying Corps. It was one of the first British aircraft to be taken to France at the beginning of World War One, and the first Allied aircraft to be shot down by the Germans on the twenty-second of August nineteen fourteen. It's also one of the first British bomber aircraft. It's what they looked like originally then. Yeah, that's what Dad's dad would have probably worked on. Yeah. Oh yeah, probably. Was a carpenter, so would he have done? Well, he would have worked on the propeller and the struts and things, wasn't yeah. he? He got a skid plate underneath, didn't he? Yeah, I know. So I noticed that. So there were over eight thousand Avro 504s built. And by 1918, Royal Air Force had three thousand of them. Two thousand two hundred and seventy-six were trainers. Most were equipped with a rotary engine. So the entire engine revolves along along with the propeller. So that was a Port Victoria East Church Kitten, designed as a lightweight bi biplane fighter, at 94 miles an hour, one Lewis gun, long, intended to shoot down zeppelins, which, after which it would land in the sea. Huh. Like a torpedo with wings. Messerschmitt BF 109G6. The first prototype flew in 1935 was fitted with a Rolls Royce Kestrel engine. <laughs> Didn't seem like a good idea, I suppose, after that. Here is a Hanley Page Halifax. is a Halifax, yeah. which was the forerunner to Lancaster. Well, they flew alongside, didn't they? Not as famous as no. the Lancaster. Huge. Absolutely enormous, isn't it? Yeah. Look at the size of the tyres. Yeah. That was a 2,000 pound high capacity bomb, which parachuted in, delayed de detonation. Ugh. Wicked really, isn't it? Well, it's quite low there, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's only about six foot wing. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> A flying flea. Or flying squirrel engine. It could be flown by anyone who could drive a car, apparently. <laughs> Designed in 1933. Something a bit closer to modern days. The Dassault Mirage. And things like tractors as well. David Brown aircraft tractor. And that's, yeah, an Austin Mark 1 FV 1804. An Austin Champ. Vampire. Fighter trainer. It was a second jet engine ordered by the aircraft during the Second World War. Apart from its jet engine, it used many design features from the Mosquito, including a wooden fuselage. So the, the Vampire was the first jet aircraft in service in the Second World War that was a jet plane. Yeah. What's that thing? Hmm? Can't really see, but that uh, oh, yeah, looks like the Wright plane. Brothers plane, doesn't it? Yeah. So these are some of the really air, early aircraft up there. It's 
so much to see. Jet Provost. So I think it's, yeah, that would be that. Well, that so that there is a Blackburn Mercury monoplane from 1911. Rolls Royce Merlin. 1390 brake horsepower. So this is an anti submarine missile, an Australian ship launched an anti submarine missile with a range of 10 nautical miles. Could carry a nuclear depth charge. Nuclear depth charges? Grief. So up there, there's the Wright Flyer 1903, the world's first aeroplane. Yep. At a speed of 30 miles an hour and a range of 852 feet. Or do you want to be 852 feet? <laughs> <laughs> doing 30 <laughs> miles an hour with a 12 horsepower four cylinder piston engine it flew for flew 852 feet for 59 seconds after four flights a strong wind blew over blew the aircraft over and it never flew again oh. and this is a replica obviously it first flew in 1964 so that replica has actually flown <laughs> so that's it from the allied for, you've moved it now, I can't read it. From the Allied Air Forces Memorial in the Yorkshire Air Museum, and uh, I thought we'll give you a suitable background here. <laughs> yeah, no, I really enjoyed that, and uh, it's well worth a visit, even on a sort of a grey day like today. No, no, it's yeah. been good. Yeah, I think you and Poppy's enjoyed having a wander around. Oh, well, I like looking around all the, all the buildings rather than yeah. uh, the actual aircraft, yeah, yeah. especially these out here. Yeah. yeah. So well, I, I'll try and uh, organise that then, <laughs> see if we can have a balance of that then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so if you like what you see, give us a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe, hit the notifications icon, and we'll catch up with you soon. See you then. See you then. Bye. Bye. Bye.